<laughs> I'd love to see one of those people that comes out to lunch with you who pulls the, well, actually, go to Russia and then get a, well, actually, from the Russian <laughs> people. <laughs> Guys, welcome back to another Global Wine News. Yay! Welcome, we've got Noah, we've got Henry, and of course I'm Brendan. Uh, and we thought we'd um, uh, discuss something that happened a couple of weeks back that uh, seemed to get some people riled, some really good interesting conversations came out of it. Um, now, Henry. Yeah. We've been talking about Appalachian. You know about Appalachian, right? All over it. All over it. Yeah, so yeah. you know about this, This well, what did you call it? The Big Mac effect? Uh, well, regional copyright. Regional copyright, yeah. So uh, a place can have a regional copyright to say that, um, you know, this here comes from the, the the town of, say, Champagne. Yep. Right? And in fact, it is so ingrained, they actually call themselves the Champenois. They are the people of Champagne. Sick. Except for when Russia says. What? So. <laughs> <laughs> so in Russia, uh, Champenskoya? Champenskoya is the, the Russian word for champagne. In Russia, like, grape ferments. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, this is the first time it's really happened. It's a really big deal in the wine industry uh, where uh, Russia has basically come out and said, uh, no, no, we're Champenskoya, you're sparkling wine. And champagne... Love it. <laughs> so on board. So <laughs> Russian. And that's the most Russian thing ever. It's like, no. No 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 no, <laughs> no, 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 no. We we champagne. So, <laughs> what was even more? So we we thought, okay, well, this is all right, fine. Then you're gonna one day go to Russia, and you're not gonna be able to buy any champagne because obviously, you know, with how fervently champagne arguably would be the the uh, one uh, AOC or appellated area that has been so you know fervent in protecting protecting it because this concept of champagne and not being able to drink champagne from anywhere but champagne. Right, it's so mm. strong, yeah. so strong. It, it commands a big dollar value. But funnily enough, uh, I believe it was Moet and Chandon. Like, yeah, sure, Russia, no worries. We'll just change it, sparkling wine, and they sent it. I think it was LVMH. LVMH, yeah, 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 yeah. LVMH. Yeah, they're, they're the company that own own Moet and Chandon. Oh, okay. And they were like, yeah, because well, they have two percent of the the uh, Russian market for for sparkling wine. But um, Russia has always been. Like seriously, since like the 1800s, Russia has been one of the largest uh, markets for consumption of champagne. Things like even Cristal was was built for the Tsars. Yeah, aristocratic, like, you know, big wealthy families yeah. just drinking shitloads of champagne. And sweet. Uh, and sweet demisec was uh, this sort of sweet, what they call uh, half dry, okay. uh, right, off dry um, uh, styles of champagne. Even to this day, trying to find demisec uh, champagne outside of Russia is very, very, very difficult. It almost exclusively goes to one country. Um, wow, so that's crazy. If they lost Russia, like that's serious. That's like a big dent. That is a big dent. It's something like twenty percent of all champagne is is consumed all in Russia. You know, <laughs> not according to the Russians, it's sparkling wine. Well, <laughs> well, yeah, well yeah. I've never had the stuff. Well, yeah, well they make their own they make their own uh style of sparkling wine. I think it's like mm -hmm. Siberian Champenskoya, which I have admittedly Sick. never had before. I want it really I, badly. I really want to if try. If there's any like really, really specific importers of Russian sparkling wine into Australia, and if you're watching, yeah, please get in like, touch. Like, get in touch. We'll buy like a case, like for sure. <laughs> I really want to try Russian sparkling wine. Well, Champenskoya. Sorry, Russian something. Champenskoya. <laughs> Duh. And so they've come back going, no, well, ours is, and I don't think it really registered on, on anyone's radar. Particularly the Champagne was that Champagne Scoria was was it's such a, a change in um, verbiage, it's such a change in spelling and lexicon, and it doesn't even look the same as the word Champagne. So mm -hmm. I'm guessing they were just like, yeah, we just we don't mind if they want to call it Siberian Champagne Scoria as long as they're giving us the dollars. Yeah, and this is where it's it you know Appalachian has this big loaded thing, right? It's about the money. Yeah, yep. right. It's about protecting an area and guised in and for many good reasons, guys, in this idea of protecting quality. And, and there is certain big aspects of protection of quality that's that's not denying that. But if Champagne is willing to bend on this, mm -hmm. do we start to, do you think we'll start to wonder whether or not Appalachian's even important? No, I don't reckon it's, a, I think it's a bunch of French farmers not wanting to take on the Russian mafia. Do you reckon, reckon it's that simple? Ah, oh, it's just Russians, man. I'm terrified of them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've watched the Olympics recently, but damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the, Russia wasn't in the Olympics. 
No, nah, well, the ROC, sorry. But, like, <laughs> you look at them, you look at the... Well, That's was, the only time they'll, they'll go against, like, no, no, no. For the Olympics will be not Russia. will be whatever you want. So oh, they, yeah, they've yeah, done yeah. the inverse for champagne. Yeah. <laughs> I was watching, like, the Russian uh, women's volleyball team, and it's either, like, a Russian supermodel-looking person or someone who looks like they've survived, like, a Siberian winter. And that's the two sorts of Russian people. Or as and winemakers either call one vintage. Of, and if either one of them walked up to me and said, hey, I'd like to call this champagne, I'd be like, be my guest. Do whatever you want. <laughs> well, fine. now the LVMH has come out and just gone, you know what, that's fine. Like, we're willing to bend on this because I, I, I'm assuming it's not because of cultural respect for the Russians and the fear of the Russians. Yes. No. Nah. Well, do you, is it is it a fear led thing of, of maybe not fear of Russians, but fear of the loss of dollars? That, but also could it be like, hey, I don't think that people are all of a sudden going to be like, a oh, bottle of this Don Perrier from Siberia. Like, I, maybe they're just not threatened, but like they're thinking that Lots it's different. There. <laughs> well, <I don't. laughs> there was Don Perrier the, from Perrier the, Jouets and Don yeah. Perignon have just got yeah. done a collab. No, 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 Spock, so, I love it. What's and, and I guess like the the idea behind something like an appellation is to determine what is real and what is fake, uh, in many yeah. respects. Yeah. But now you've got this double standard. Like both champ and scoria is just as real in consumers' minds as champagne is. Yeah. So are we are we now going to start drinking revered champ and scoria? If we can get it to Australia, yeah, it'd be great. I'm keen. Sure. Yeah. If if anyone's watching this and they they've actually tried Champ and Scoia like out of Russia, I'm fascinated to actually know what it's like. What grapes they they make from? I've done that's fascinating too. Yeah. Hey, Are they surely be doing like-, like they couldn't grow like Chardonnay in Siberia because it's like there's enough frost problems in Champagne and Chablis anyways. Oh man, ha- where where there's a will, there's a way, and I'm sure in Russia they've got a lot of will to make it work. You know, I'm sure they figure it out. But I mean, in Australia we don't have. Uh, appellation per se we have GIs geographical indicators yeah. um, which basically imply that you can't say that a wine comes from um, uh, Margaret River when it's from you know McLaren Bale yeah. right? somewhere somewhere not Margaret River yeah. and that makes sense because like when you're drinking something in the bottle that says what it says it is yeah. except now you've got this weird double standard like, like for example referencing in Australia orange and we can't say orange mm. wine because it doesn't come from mm. orange mm. and that's a colloquial thing you know, in now this champagne double standard. Yeah. Champagne now means two things instead of one thing. But it's a different name, isn't it? Like Champagne Scoia is is what we're talking about as a Russian. It, they are different. Like you're not going to look at that and be like, ah, oh, champagne. You're going to be like, oh, Russian champagne. Aren't you? All right. Uh, taking another thread, look at Prosecco. Okay. So Prosecco was the name of the grape variety. Okay. Okay. Uh and then I think it was in, I want to say late 90s, early noughties, I think early like 2000s. Yep. Um, Italy was concerned as the rise of consumption of Prosecco uh, happened, uh, which is, if you're familiar with Prosecco, cheap sparkling wine. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very. yeah I mean, not ne- not necessarily cheap in terms of quality, but it happens to be really good value. Um, they changed the name of the grape variety to Glera. Okay. It's just called Glera. Sexy now. name. For sexy, name. sexy name. Glera. Glera. Yeah. Sounds like a Glera. Lamborghini model. Yes. <laughs> um, and the problem with this is there was all these producers, in particular in Australia, around the King Valley, that had brought out, and especially the Dalzotto family, oh, yeah. had brought out the Prosecco grape variety. Yeah. They'd planted Prosecco. They'd grown it for like, you know, a couple of decades. They had made their entire brand around selling Prosecco because people were interested in drinking good quality Prosecco and wanted to drink it locally. But then Italy was just like, yeah, no, nah, we're just going to scrub that name out. Uh, we're going to change the name. Then we're going to protect the brand that is Prosecco. And we're going to say this is the Prosecco region. And only things from the Prosecco region can be called Prosecco. You all need to change your names to Glera. Okay. And this starts to become really problematic when discussing free trade agreements between countries. But like if I'm planning a siege on a castle and I know that I need a trebuchet, just because I buy one from a region that doesn't make them, I'm still going to get by with my sparkling catapult. So I think that it doesn't necessarily matter what it is if people like drinking it. It was a long run up and I really enjoyed it. If it's going to break down the walls, it's going to break down the walls. So if you start calling it Galera and you start having to do some really shifty stuff like we do with our orange wine, where it's not orange wine, it's off-white wine. So if you're making a Galera that's now Prosecco, can you not call it like Professional Secco or something as the wine name? 
and then just be like, that's pretty funny. Gotcha. Um, well, this is the thing. It's like, who cares? Just do it anyways. Clearly, Russia has proved that you can just do it. Yeah. And no, no one can really stop you. Dude, and right. no one's really stopped calling Prosecco Prosecco in Australia. No. Everyone still calls it Prosecco. Well, it's still it's still legally allowed to be called Prosecco. So, so the Italians have launched onto well, the Italian, I guess not all, all Italians. No, 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 all of Italy have well, they've launched on this sort of um, uh, mission to be able to protect it. Um, and it's come up as being very topical at the moment because Australia is trying to negotiate a free trade agreement with Italy. And the way that these things typically operate is sort of like you scratch our back, we'll scratch yours. And so we want a free trade agreement. They go, we want you to stop your uh, producers calling Prosecco Prosecco. And they're, they're throwing in, we sort of did this uh, with uh, New Zealand once upon a time where, you know, wet wet tax, we have the wine equalization tax on wine bottle sales here. And small artisan producers can claim the, uh, the wet back, mm-hmm. like a rebate, um, except in a, uh, a particular range of, I think it was to do with milk. It had something to do with dairy, something to do with milk. Um, we somehow traded away the rights to New Zealand and New Zealand producers can actually claim their wet back in Australia. And if you have a look at white wine in Australia, the largest uh, consumed white wine in Australia is New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. Mm. And, and right, every single scary, individual right. producer yep. uh, gets a $350,000 tax break. That's nice. For them. Uh, for them. And that money goes straight back to straight back to New Zealand. Mm. And so these free trade agreements, these, these um, external arrangements between countries, a lot of these things can come as sort of like uh, external come under fire. And now it's sort of like the Bridges Echo uh, and especially the Dalzotto family mm-hmm. are saying, well, shit, what are we, what are we going to do? Because I mean, Clara, I mean, it's a pretty smart move, shifty, but smart on Italy's behalf to call it something really shit. But I'm sure if Italy were to just scrub it out and make it like a, a different name, something that, that actually sounded better, they'd probably get more broad scale adoption. Because I, I wouldn't be up to the task of trying to sell sparkling Glera. But how how come we have to call it Glera? Like, what's the deal? What You know, Shiraz Syrah. Like, why can't we just be like, actually, in Australia, it's actually known as delicious juice. Yeah, well this, is like, the, well, this is the thing. It's like, do we even put the variety on the front or do we even put the class of the drink on the front? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, if you go down the Appalachian model, we could just call it wine of South Australia, which we have to do for some particular things. But, like... With, with, do you just call it King Valley Sparkling? Do you need to call it Glera? Just call it you, King Valley Sparkling and then you, you, people you need get to call it. it Sparkling. Yeah. You know, like um, Alpha Box and Dice. Could you call it? Which, yeah. uh, is it Zap Tongue? Yeah, Zap Tongue Prosecco, yeah. Yeah, but I, I mean, oh, no, really. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's I, think it's, I think it's Glera. I think it's Prosecco. Yeah. But like, I don't necessarily go, I want a bottle of Zap Tongue Prosecco. I go, I want a bottle of Zap Tongue. I think it's, yeah, it's now Taro, but yeah, I know what you mean. Taro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just buy a bottle of, I mean, that's what, like, that's what Glera does as a product it's like i want that reliability of knowing what i'm getting so if you know if it's just you know king valley and it's in a under a sparkling lid it's like well it's probably going to be this could we could we make a wine that's sparkling chardonnay call it champagne spelt s-h-a-m-p-a-i-n p-a no so th- this is the um uh if you do you know have you heard it seen the uh, champagne producer gh mum yeah, I have had some mum. A little mum, yep. Uh, do you know that Darenberg created a D-A-D-D, a dad? That's fine. Yeah, and then got absolutely roasted for it. Oh, that sucks. Because, well, he also literally ripped off the branding and just changed yeah. the letters. Yeah, it's yeah. Sick. <laughs> it was, it's you know, sick. It's pretty, it was pretty uh, cool. Yeah, you're going you're to get in trouble. But, I mean, um, a Verve Clico uh, have pretty much, you know, another very, very famous, very well-known high-quality Grand Mark House of Champagne. Yep. Uh, have protected the color orange. And even recently, I believe, I mean, they had an issue with Stefano Lubiana um, and they took him to court over it. Um, and just because the orange looked a little bit too similar. Really? Yeah. It's like a specific Pantone. They have they have quite literally protected the color of that. the wine. No, the color of the label. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, you know that Cadbury's, Cadbury's got that purple Cadbury's color. Have, have yeah, the purple color. But I mean, in, in the drinks industry, you don't find beers do that. But in the wine industry, particularly out of Champagne, there there is a you know perverse number of brands that are very fervent about protecting everything it has to do with the brand. Yeah, I mean, with people buying off label and stuff like that, it sort of makes sense. Yeah, well, I suppose you know we've got great grey imports, Champagne. You know, it's a really and nefarious little market. Got, well, we had the Benfolds thing. We're not stopping anyone making Benfolds. 
Yeah, well, we tried. It's a bit harder to do in in China, I guess. Where yeah. So, so the the concept. Do you think it degrades the the promise that champagne gives you? No, no, I don't. I think that if you know, you know, and if you're really if you're gonna get a bottle of French champagne, you're not gonna get confused and accidentally buy something that's not French champagne if you know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Anyone who's not, anyone who's not that invested in it and accidentally buys something else, like. Is that really that so, damaging? Are they the sort? Of, is that the target audience for your French champagne? Someone who can't tell the yeah, difference between a French but, bottle and. A- but this is the thing, you can still call Verve Clicquot Verve Clicquot. People, that's the thing with champagne; it has yeah, more brand, brand power than actually where it's from. For a, in a lot of cases, champagne is a whole brand, and we get that. Yeah. And, but it's like sparkling wine. Like champagne can't be called champagne; it has to be called sparkling wine. All right, cool. But you're still calling it Verve Clicquot sparkling wine. Great. We're still calling it Dom Perignon. We're still calling it, you know, uh, Moa Chandon. We get it. Well, this is so you need to have the brand power to do Perignon. that. And this is where it starts to open up the potential for uh, if if Appalachian starts to lose its meaning because Appalachian controls typically over a word on a label, a regional. They said a regional. Yeah, but if they county. can't call it champagne, what is the degradation of the champagne Appalachian if it's not allowed to be called champagne? Well, it's only allowed to be called champagne, uh, not allowed to be called champagne in Russia. So champagne everywhere else, but when you go to Russia, so, you're gonna have this weird. It's like you're entering some weird sort of time warp where Moen Chandon is sparkling wine of France. Yeah, and but, and so I'd love to see. A, else I'd love to see one of those people that comes out to lunch with you who pulls the well actually go to Russia and then get a well actually from the Russian. <laughs> people, like, well, but this yeah. this is this is this is the thing. So th- since that's the only place that it matters, and they're saying it's twenty percent of the. The market for champagne in the world, particularly demi sec. Yeah. yeah. Then they can start making glare a demi sec. <laughs> so it's just, it's literally the specific, um, like Russian import. They can cut, they can, he's like, you know what, fuck you, Russia. We're going to make the cheapest shit because you've just said we can do whatever we want. So we're just going to make the cheapest shit for you. Do you reckon? Yeah, true. Do you reckon? And then the rest of the world gets champagne and we all live in Happy Land and then you go to Russia and it's. Spikling sweet glaura <laughs> or champagnoski. Yeah. Do you reckon was- Have a good old champagnoskoya yoski. Oh, <laughs> saying cha- I forgot. Apologies. I <laughs> Do you reckon there's any chance that sparkling white wine being produced in North Korea isn't being branded as champagne? I, I may, I don't they're know. They're definitely how to calling it champagne over there. Like, I don't know that for a fact, but I there's don't, no way that they're just like, I don't well, think. There's only one guy that's drinking champagne over there, I reckon. <laughs> so really, and on that point, we're going to leave it there. There you go. Uh, it's not real champagne scoria unless it's Russian champagne scoria, uh, and they'll have the last laugh on this. I, I don't think so. I think we're having a last laugh with our champagne. <laughs> we're champagne. Sick. Bye. Ciao. Ciao.